Hey everyone, this is Rob from Rob Hughes Reef. I thought today we'd talk a little bit about how I'm doing my Kalkwasser slurry. I know many of you out there are already using Kalkwasser in a normalized solution. There's a bunch of us out there that are trying the uh, Kalkwasser slurry, which is a super concentrated version of Kalkwasser um, that we dose in suspension. Some of the benefits of Kalkwasser slurry is uh, overcoming the evaporation limits sometimes that you'll run into when your alkalinity demand uh, exceeds the amount of normal saturated calc that you can put into your system uh, due to evaporation. Calcwasser can get you past that. Um, there are other reasons that you might want to uh, dose calcwasser. Uh, one of them is, uh, I call it an ancillary benefit. You can see a, a marked increase in average pH within your system, which I believe is completely desirable. I fully uh, recommend chasing pH. It's a, a very important parameter. Uh, normal seawater pH is 8.2. Oftentimes uh, we, could, we say that 7.8 to 8.3 is just fine in the reef tanks, but I think things just tend to just survive. And they'll do okay at, at lower pHs, but I think that um, these animals uh, prefer to be in their normal environment, which is a, a pH of 8.2. So try to keep it above 8. Um, chasing pH is okay. I know some people say otherwise, but I firmly disagree with that. I've also found that the advantages of calcwasser in general are it's a, two, uh, it's a well balanced two part additive uh, of calcium and alkalinity. Um, the way uh, corals uptake bicarbonates and form calcium carbonates, uh, the ratio that they do that within your calcium demands can be more than met uh, with calcwasser and the ratios that are added. I've never found that over the years. Uh, of dosing calcwasser that uh, my calcium consumption uh, outpaced uh, my additives with calcwasser. It's a very, very steady and stable, uh, also meant not to mention a very inexpensive uh, way to, to replenish these critical uh, elements in your tank. So simply put, what we're doing is creating a slight venturi effect. And what I wanted to do was use off the shelf parts to make this application as inexpensive as possible. So what you see here basically is all the parts that are needed for this manifold setup. And this can be put together uh, for less than $15 at your local hardware store like Home Depot, Menards, or Lowe's. Of course, one, the only crucial element is you have to have access to a 3D printer uh, either by yourself or your friend, um, print the nozzle, uh, which helps create the venturi effect. I'll go over in a minute the, the basic assembly procedures of the manifold itself, and then we'll talk about how we set this up and some of the, the crucial things that we have to pay attention to in the setup. Okay, the concept is pretty simple. We have a nozzle here um, that we created for creating the uh, slight venturi effect. That would be your input side. Push that forward like so. And then your input nozzle, which is designed in this three quarter inch fitting to be a half inch. Now your basic venturi concept is when you have a higher flow that moves transitions into a lower flow. As such, we have a half inch input and then it opens up into a three quarter inch exit and this will create your draw. Now we want this draw to prevent localized pooling and to help pull along uh, the calcwasser slurry um, so that it doesn't uh, precipitate uh, as it comes out. We have here a Murloc uh, fitting, quarter inch NPT. I've simply taken some RO tube line and depending on which doser you have, you could go straight from your doser with this line. Um, I'm using some uh, silicone tubing and I've mitered this here at a 45. It's much easier to put that over. And of course, on the output end, I've also mitered it um, just to take every precaution that uh, increasing the surface area here will again reduce chances that we have buildup at the end. Even though we have our, our water in constant motion and the venturi draw, which should prevent that from happening. Um, I'm just doing it as a precaution because it doesn't hurt. So, of course, you can use some plumber's putty um, to help with these seals. But I also drilled out the backside of this Murloc fitting 
so that I could push the tubing all the way through. And I do this, I'll show you in a moment. Once you have the uh, fittings set into the threads where you want them, you can adjust this here to be slightly in front of the, the Venturi nozzle. So as the flow goes by, it's always going to be taking that calquas or slurry away and preventing the, uh, the buildup on the end of the, uh, the dosing line. Using a short stub of three quarter inch standard PVC pipe, you'll seat that in here. Of course, you're gluing this all together uh, with your normal standard gluing procedures. Cap that to the end there so you have a flush fit and then screw in your three quarter inch nozzle as such. Now, keep in mind that you want the differential between the input and the output diameters to help with that Venturi draw. So the draw is slight. It's not very strong. Um, we don't want a super strong one because we don't want to be um, pulling undue suction on your dosing pump. Um, and I like to keep this uh, above the, the water line of your sump, right? So if we keep it above the water line, and we have water running through this, I can keep the top of this valve off and water will not come out. However, if you do tend to drop it a little bit below the water line, um, you will have water come out. But because of the Venturi draw the way we have it, um, the back pressure is not significant enough to overcome the, uh, the dosing pump um, and you won't have a back feed. Um, I've tested this and on, across a, a couple different dosers, uh, Versas and Camors of different types, and in no case did uh, any back pressure overcome and back feed into your, your dosing vessel. So I don't feel that there's any significant cause for concern there. So basically you'll have your input half inch line, your output three quarter inch line from your sump to your sump. And then you can locate this anywhere you want um, in your setup, in your fish room, if you want and you have room, you can certainly do this underneath your tank stand in your sump area as well. Um, and then uh, dosing uh, rates that I've tested um, with the right doser, which is like a, a Camor, I felt had a better draw on the slurry than let's say the Versa. Um, I dosed as low as two to five milliliters per minute uh, with a Camor. So if maybe you have a, a continuous dosing application because your alkalinity is high enough to dose that, um, you could certainly do that. Um, right with the verses, they don't draw uh, slurry as well in the lower rates. I've found that with the verses, they're, they seem to pull better um, at 20 to 40 milliliters per minute uh, uh, as far as dosing rates go. So there you have it. It's very simple um, in its construction and its concept. Um, but even though it's simple, I think this truly uh, transforms the flexibility by which we can set this up uh, and use it around our tanks. Um, it'll, it'll certainly uh, be applicable to a lot of different configurations and locations. And because we're mixing it in line, um, as long as you have a pump that'll support the distance, it really doesn't matter, you know, within reason how far you can keep this from your tank. You, you know, if you want to run it from your basement upstairs, this could certainly do it as long as you have a pump that'll support the head pressure. And if you want to locate this 15, 20 feet away from your tank on the same floor level, maybe in a fish room, this certainly will do that as well. I'm going to take you through um, my particular setup that is uh, running on my tank at this time and show you how I've hooked that up. And so here this is a pretty simple concept. Uh, I worked with a friend who uh, helped me design the Venturi effect that we're going to use uh, in this application to seamlessly mix the uh, suspended calc, calc washer in line uh, to avoid localized precipitation. And by the time it gets back to your tank, you won't burn your corals. Um, you won't have abiotic precipitation settling out in your sump. Um, Chris Clarabin um, was very uh, instrumental in helping me uh, fine-tune the Venturi effect we were looking for. Okay, here we have the setup that is running on my main display tank. It's located in my uh, mechanical room, which also serves as my uh, fish room. So it's out of sight, out of mind. And it's probably a total of eight to 10 feet line 
from here to my display tank. You can see I've got a five gallon bucket, uh, old tropic marin bucket that I repurposed. Simply put a slight notch in for the cord. You wanna make sure that your bucket is fairly well sealed um, so it can't get uh, fresh air into the bucket and react with the, uh, the calc washer. Um, if the carbon dioxide gets in there too much, um, you can have a precipitate form over time. Being that uh, this could be a long-term dosage thing, you want this pretty sealed up. So I have my doser located. You can see a short vertical line and the key part here is keep it off the bottom. So in case your uh, mixing pump ever goes out and the calc settles out, you don't dose a super, super saturated amount of calc into your system. So the fallback there is if your line is above the settle point, if your pump ever goes out, you're only going to dose a, a normal saturated uh, solution of calc washer, not let's say you're running 4% and it settles out and you're dosing 42% sludge, um, then you got a dangerous situation going on. So make sure you measure out your line length uh, properly based on your setup. So you keep it uh, a good few inches off the bottom. So if it ever settles out, you don't have any problems. And then the output line is running into the dosing line that comes into the Murloc bidding, as you can see there. Apologize for the tight view. And then of course, I'm using a JBO SLW10. This particular unit has been running for in excess of uh, 190 days, coming up on 200 days. So, so far so good. I've had very good luck with this unit. So the bottom braided line is my half inch line. It's coming into the manifold and three quarter inch line that's returning to my pump. I currently have it hooked up to an Eheim Compact 1000, which is rated for 264 gallons per hour. Um, at that rating, I think it's probably just the minimum that you'd want. And as such, I don't have any valves in line to throttle it back. So I'm running it wide open. All right, back here at my sump. This is the three quarter inch line that I have coming in. I typically keep a pump uh, power head in my sump to keep water moving. I don't like stagnant water. And I keep it right in the flow. Not that that's necessary in this application. The calc washer, as you watch um, the unit dose, it's not even cloudy coming out of the manifold uh, at the dosing rates I've been doing at. So I'm currently dosing 40 milliliters a minute in my Versa. And it doesn't look cloudy at all coming out of the manifold. So again, that's about an eight to 10 foot line running through the wall back to my bucket area. And then you can see my old dosing line from my Avast Calcster where I was doing it, dosing normal saturated calc washing. Now this is still here. I'm keeping it uh, just in case. There's no reason for me to unhook it at this point. But um, this line is no longer being used. And I'm solely running calc washer slurry using that manifold that I designed. All right, you can see that the Versa is dosing at this time. And if we look at the output to the manifold here, we can see that it is perfectly clear. You don't see any cloudiness coming out. Now, at this time, I'm only running a 2% saturation, uh, which is a little bit lower than the 4% that's commonly used. I think 4% is more ideal for pumping, but uh, due to my lower demand right now, 2% uh, I think is more appropriate for me. And there you have it. So you can still see steady alkalinity levels um, dosing day to day 
with kelp loss or slurry, even if uh, your elk demands aren't exceeding your evaporation rates, you'll not have to refill your, your kelp loss or vessel. You can ditch that kelp in your ATO. You can ditch the kelp loss or stir. Um, it's a simplified setup and far less cheaper than a common stir, which uh, goes for a, a pretty penny for a decent one. There are many ways to dose kelp loss or slurry. Uh, several people out there have pioneered uh, many effective ways. Um, this is a method that I've come up with. I believe this overcomes some of the, uh, some of the limitations I've, I've seen and wanted to uh, avoid. Uh, primarily, uh, that's uh, dosing rate speed and the need to uh, locate your kelp loss or slurry bucket or container right on top of your sump. Some of you guys uh, spent and girls have spent a lot of time and effort uh, making your display tank uh, something to look at. Maybe it's in a common living area uh, that your significant other doesn't want to look at a bunch of buckets and hoses and tubes uh, sitting around. Uh, you want to locate it, let's say, in a fish room or a closet, maybe in the basement, however you want to do it. Um, the kelp loss or slurry can't be dosed over uh, long distances normally because it's likely to fall out of suspension uh, within the normal dosing lines that you see when you go too far. Um, I wanted to come up with a, a method that overcame this. So I came up with a slurry manifold, which somewhat means in loose terms, you're going to use, um, you're gonna bring your tank water to your slurry setup. So all it takes is a manifold uh, in your existing sump or uh, a pump. Uh, I use the Eheim Compact 1000. You can use any pump that you have. I recommend a minimum of 260 gallons per hour. Certainly you can go up the farther you go, um, if you're dealing with head pressure from the basement, you're going to have to adjust the, your pump size accordingly. Um, if you oversize your pump a little bit in this setup, you can certainly put a valve in line to, to play with your pump. Okay, this is the calculator that I developed to help myself work through the slurry problem, as well as I found it very useful for normal calc washer uh, saturation as well. So for those of you who aren't ready for calc slurry and you're still interested in dosing normal calc washer, reach out. I'm certainly willing to share this uh, no problem with anybody who's interested. So it's good for normal calc washer and slurries uh, from one to 10% uh, volume by weight, or I'm sorry, weight mixture. So going through here, we have uh, our metric units. We have our imperial units and the calculator is designed to work uh, through one of two modes. Daily consumption is where you know your daily consumption of alkalinity in DKH for your tank. This is very important. Uh, you should absolutely know this, if at all possible, when doing any additives to your tank for replacing alkalinity. Um, if you don't know how to do this, simply measure your tank's current alkalinity, stop dosing for 24 hours, and then measure again, and the difference is your daily consumption. Now, if you're already cruising along and you, you feel your, your consumption is pretty high and it may be detrimental to your, to your corals to stop dosing for a full 24 hours, um, we can also go by daily dosage, which is to say, um, I'm going to dose X milliliters uh, in a 24 hour period to my tank. And if I do, what is um, my additive in DKH or mill equivalents per liter, okay? So all the boxes in green here are um, information that you provide the calculator and everything in blue is a calculated output. So an answer to your problem. So let's start with daily consumption and say, I know in my case here that my system volume is 200 gallons. Um, I know my daily consumption in my tank is actually around uh, 0.5 DKH per day. And I'm going to mix up a four gallon batch of slurry and a five gallon pail. I'm gonna start here at 2%. And you'll see that um, I should be dosing 269 milliliters of 2% slurry in a 24 hour period. And then of course you can set your dosing regimen uh, to dispense that however you want. Now, if I'm not comfortable in starting at that, I've got a percentage here and say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work my way up to that. I'm gonna set it at 75% and you'll see it'll drop it here. This starting point mode, of course, is only good for a daily consumption rate because when we're into the mode of daily dosage, that's 
you're just going to arbitrarily dose that amount, right? So um, the starting point is, is somewhat of a moot point. So in the daily uh, dosage portion, you can see here that, okay, my system volume hasn't changed. I'm still gonna make the same batch, but uh, you'll note that here in the 269 milliliters, it still gives us the same output here. And if I was to change it to say 200, you can say our estimated DKH additive per day is 0.37 DKH. So essentially that's how this works. If we were doing normal slurry, um, and then we said our daily consumption was 0.5 DKH, you can see we should be dosing 2,500 milliliters or about two and a half liters per day. So hopefully some of you um, find this useful. It certainly was for me um, when I was tweaking things out in my tank. So many of you are probably thinking, why are you doing Kalkwasser now if your consumption is low like it is? With, uh, with it only being around a half DKH, it, the answer is I don't need to do it right now. Normal Kalkwasser would be more than adequate to meet my tank demands. However, I wanna figure it out now and I wanna know how this works. I wanna know that I can be successful long-term with it before I get to the point where I, I need to take drastic action to cover my daily alkalinity consumption. Um, the biggest thing I want to do is avoid using a calcium reactor, the cost, the complications with it. I've been a fan of Kalkwasser um, since the late 90s when I had my first uh, reef tank. I was successful with it then and it continues to work for me now. It's just uh, such an easy solution to a, a very important uh, challenge in our reef tanks, which is how do we support our, uh, our corals and their, and their need for growth. So that's the, the simple answer, and um, it's, it's also a fun journey. Well, that concludes this video. I hope everybody found it useful and at least a little bit informative. Um, this is just the beginning of the journey for me, and I am still learning along the way, along with the rest of you. Um, comment below if, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to add anything. I don't know at all, but uh, I hope we learn together as we go through all this. Uh, Feel free to like uh, the video and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out more content in the future. Uh, stick with me as I'm learning how to navigate through all this video editing and whatnot. Have a great day.